What is hatching, Tuggy Peeps? Oh man, tough coming at you today with week two of the GBA season seven against Tampa Bay Lux Rays and Monatui, aka Chris. Now, we're going to take a quick look at the teams that are on the layout. We got Zygarde, Rosary, Jirachi, Buzzwool, Greninja, and Miltank. Very disappointed we don't see Floor just because we have Steel EMZ and now it is wasted and there's no good use for it. But we can still work with what we got. Chris is a fantastic competitor, so we got a long battle ahead of us. Still not feeling well. So the face cam is covered by the NCO logo this week. Few people to thank uh, for week one and two. Want to th throw a thank you out there to the Black Snorlax for Jen and the team for us. Uh, week one, Levo recorded our match. And week two, Juan Cito Marvel recorded our match. So big thank you to everyone who's been a part of the Pittsburgh Pirate, it is GBA Season 7 Experience. Uh, don't forget to check out Old Man Tup's Discord down below. If you'd like instant access to Old Man Tup. Now, we're going to be playing Chris. Like I said, Monitui. We're going to start out with Shatter because we want to get rocks up right away. He didn't bring Mantine. Again, sadness. So we know we're going to be able to get rocks up and they're going to be up to stay. We have a spinner. He doesn't. So... We can get rid of rocks when we need to. He's going to instantly switch out here into Mill Tank, which I'm going to assume is because he thought probably the Ice Beam was coming and he's got Thick Fat. I kind of played around with the idea to have Scrappy this week just so he could take care of Chandelure, but I didn't know. But this is going to be his rocker. I went for an Earth Power there just to see what he could do. Even an Earthquake, I didn't think would kill us from a non-offensive variant. And we do less than half, which is sad face. Now, I'm going to stay and go for another Earth Power, see what's going to happen. Maybe we get a little bit lucky, lower that special defense, but that isn't going to happen. He's going to milk drink, and he's going to be healing off more than we can do to him after leftovers, which is sad face. That takes him up way too far. So we got to get out of here and try to do something else. I'm gonna switch out into our Scizor. Highly doubt he has anything for us. Probably has Body Slam, maybe Earthquake or Seismic Toss. And I just don't think he's got as much for us. We're a physical variant. We're gonna resist his stab, Body Slam, not gonna get the Paralysis this turn. And we're leftovers and we can just roost off that damage for days. Now, Probably going to send in Buzzwool here, expecting the superpower, and that's perfectly fine. We are just going to go with the knockoff. Yep, Ivan the Buzzwool comes out here, the big beefy bug. We're just going to go for that knockoff, get an idea as to what variant this could be, does very little damage, and we're going to knock off the Assault Vest. So we know he's not running a sub variant because subs can't be run on the Assault Vest. So very pleased with that turn right off the bat we know what kind of buzzwool he's working with so it's probably going to be a bulk bulky buzzwool with some punch in action and we can switch in here not really fearing much gonna go for the power up punch and we eat that up so making some pretty decent plays off the bat it's gonna go back out into improve snake we didn't over predict here i was so close to clicking hp ice and if i did E easy to hit KO on this thing. Go for the Fire Blast, not going to snag the burn. Perfectly fine. But not going to do much damage at all. Now, good thing here reveals his item. We see that he has leftovers. So, I'm a little bit worried here because I'm thinking this could be a sub-coil variant, which is something that was covered by the front office. Going to go for the Thousand Arrows here, and this is going to do so much damage to our White Walker. And that made me so sad because we really don't have much else of an answer for this. And we just took ourselves to the point where a switch in isn't going to do it. Should have went for rock or uh, clearing the rocks here. Didn't. Went for a safe play. Go for the freeze dry. And that's going to do virtually nothing to this Jirachi. And we can't switch our moves to go for the rocks removal for the rapid spin but we can't do anything about it so we're just gonna have to save that for a switch in later 
for a sack. I'm gonna go for the substitute here, and I'm just like, oh, here we go. Okay. So he has sub Jirachi with the leftovers. I, I was very surprised to see leftovers on so many things, but he has a bulky team, so I shouldn't be as surprised. Now, I don't know what he's going to do here. Even if he has a Fire Punch, fully physically offensive isn't going to be enough to take us out. So that is way you know. We can go for the knockoff here, get rid of that sub. Uh, that would have been a really opportune time to switch in our Chandelure again. But, alas, we did not. And now Kevlar is down to a range. He doesn't want to be taking another hit. So no bueno, because this thing is also our mill tank switch in. I'm gonna go out and massacre the Chandelure. And we're sitting down about 50%. Gonna go for that fire punch. It's not gonna do a lot. Uh, you're going to see that isn't gonna boost our fire type moves because we are infiltrator this week because we were worried about subsets like this one is. So he's gonna switch out here. And he's gonna go into your mom. Uh, predicting possible HP ice if we had it, or just the fire blast because it's not going to be able to do much to him. Gonna land that fire blast. Chandelure not missing any attacks. Gonna snag a burn here, which is nice, but because of the burn nerf, it isn't going to do any more damage than he's recovering from leftovers. On the plus side, that nullifies his leftovers if we don't get them knocked off. Gonna go for the fire blast here. I kind of thought maybe he would get a little cheeky and over predict and try to uh hit scissor coming in the door but that didn't happen and he is almost all the way back to full again definitely under prepared for this mill tank uh much to my discomfort so we're getting go to tapu coco here because it is our hardest hitting physical thing outside of the scissor uh didn't want to go in to the hydrogen uh hope you all enjoy how i pronounce that just wait till i start botching scissor but anyway he's gonna go for the toxic here he's gonna hit a toxic on the turn which is bad because we're if i i don't remember before life war before expert belt this week <clears throat> But regardless, the Toxic isn't good on our hardest hitting attacker that's left. Gonna go for the Wild Charge here. I really thought this would net a little bit more damage, but alas, it didn't. Gonna go for the Milk Drink, and we are not going to win this battle because this is gonna put him pretty much right back to where we were before we attacked. We might be slowly inching it down, but between the Toxic Recoil and the Wild Charge Recoil, we're gonna be dead in two more turns, and he won't be. So that's no bueno. And we are going, I believe we U-turn out here, and we do, which is fantastic. Oh, gonna get a little bit of damage on here and be able to see what he's gonna try and do on the turn in. Gonna go to Kevlar, thinking we would be able to take one body slam, but after the stealth rock damage, he's gonna uh, milk drink here. Thought a body slam was gonna come in there but he does need to keep this thing healthy because it is just walling my team because like i said under prep for it much to my dismay really thought florgis and mantine were coming as you can see we over prep for them and under prep for this so no big deal your mom is just sitting there laughing in our face and he's gonna switch out to ivan and i i didn't understand he was probably faster than me I have no speed investment. I'm just going to say in a roost because I like needed the health so I would be able to get a few hits out on this thing. I don't really have a safe th switch into this anymore because Chandelure's to the point where uh, Stealth Rocks and coming in and get hit by something is probably going to take us down and that's not good. I just want to gauge my damage there. We are going to go for that bullet punch, and it doesn't do a lot. Earthquake, I think we'll be able to survive after leftovers if he goes for another one. So we are going to be able to get off another bullet punch, which is excellent. Electric Train is going to fade, which doesn't really matter that much. Going to go for the power-up punch this turn, which doesn't do 
as much to us. And I go for the roost here. Looking back on that may have been a mistake, but I thought maybe he would switch up tactics and make a mistake after seeing how little that earthquake did actually do to us. So I was trying to get back up to as high a health as I could, thinking, he, I honestly thought he might switch out that turn. Gonna go for the bullet punch, and he's going to reveal the superpower, which after the plus one is gonna be more than enough to take us down, which makes me super, super sad. Scizor is gonna go down here, which was our last good answer to the mill tank. Black Pearl is gonna come out here, and at this point, I need to start making plays because it's starting to go downhill fast. I'm gonna U turn out here. Wasn't sure whether or not this would be enough to kill. It's not. Figured he would pretty much have to go for the fighting or bug type attack here. Regardless, I didn't want to risk anything. Just gonna go into White Walker, get that free switch in, and he's gonna go for the Leech Life, which was an interesting pick. Because had I gone into Chandelure, I probably wouldn't have been able to take that any day of the week. I'm gonna go into Shatter here, because Shatter is gonna do the stuff and the things. And Shatter is gonna net a kill this week, after I just played him absolutely horribly week one. Gonna come and get a kill. Fantastic. Wait to go, Shatter. Reckon Dreams. Captain Ginyu is gonna come out, and I'm just like, oh. Oh. Great. So I don't really have a safe switch in left. Uh... Nothing I have is faster than it, and I'm going to survive this. Going to go for the Earth Power, and he survives on like 1 HP. I was like, you have to be kidding me. Shatter gets robbed from a kill. Getting one to Black Pearl, not exa I thought a uh, water type attack would be coming here. But, going to go for that Dark Pulse. And looking back on this, this series of plays, I really, really screwed myself out of what was a favorable position, what could have become a favorable position, because I completely kill my Hadrigen, um, to save Nitto King, which was a huge mistake, because so many things on his team are faster than me. Uh, if Hydrogen had been at the health it was before eating two Dark Pulses, this little bit here at the end probably wouldn't have been as easy for Mono to make the push through. But we're going to find out that this is Scarf Roserade. Don't find that here because Roserade outspeeds us 100% of the time because we were not that speed invested. Going to go into Massacre. And the only way he would outspeed us here is if he was Scarfed. And we're going to find out right here he outspeeds. It's going to drop that Sludge Bomb, and it is going to be more than enough to take us out after the Stealth Rock damage. So Roserade is just going to clean up the rest of the team. Now, here's what I was talking about. If I hadn't eaten two Dark Pulses to the face and had just sacked off Nitto King at that point, I would have been able to come in most likely would have survived the sludge bomb and this thing wouldn't have been able to you know rick roll its way through the entirety of the rest of my team so black pearl is going to go down if i'm not mistaken dies to the stealth rocks which is unfortunate for him because it doesn't count as a kill for roserade this week so mono played that master fleet made a lot of mistakes there myself not much I can do about it. Uh, aside from live and learn, look forward to week three, where we're going to play the current reigning GBA champion, which is Septile MC, aka George, uh, who I've been looking forward to play for a long time. We've been in the league together for two, if not three, seasons and have never battled once. One of the few people I played in the league with that long and haven't battled. So I'm really looking forward to that. Next week, we will be playing George and the San Francisco Arcaniners. But let's wrap this video up. Like I said, a lot of stuff I really need to do and uh, shore my game up. I can't keep blaming these matches on Ring Rust, and I just need to start playing the way I should be playing. No one to blame but myself for the way I've been playing. So uh, I hope you guys like what you saw. If you like what you see from Monotui, 
which you should have because he's fantastic. Go check him out. Give him a sub. In my opinion, he's probably one of, if not the best draft format players. He always drafts well, and he plays well with drafts. He doesn't even draft himself. So go show him some love because he deserves it, and he's critically undersubbed. But all right, guys, this has been Man Top. Thanks, everybody, from the beginning. Everyone who gens Black Snorlax, go check him out. He's a fantastic streamer. Uh, Levo from the front office, recording week one match, and Juan Cito Marvel, the man, myth, and legend himself, recording the week two matchup. All right, guys, once again, thank you very much for sticking around. These two abysmal weeks, we're down, we're 0 and 2, and we are negative 6 in differential as we lost uh, 0 2 and 0 4 in respective weeks. But all right, guys, we will catch you maybe if we're lucky, in a press conference this week. If you want to see a press conference, tell me you want to see a press conference. And if you want to see a press conference, leave your questions for that press conference covering week one and two and the draft, if you'd like, in the comments down below. All right, guys, catch you on the flip side. Peace.